watched. Oh. I watched the video you sent, Susan. Thank you. Of the ancestry? Yeah, I swear. I have to like sit and really focus. But um, but I saw there was a lot of new French records. So I'm like, okay. Mm, I thought of you. Yeah, I got to go look at those. So should I, I should watch that rather than hear a summary? I could, no, the summary is just, it's quick. You want to do that? Please? Yeah. So there's there's um, some new things on Ancestry. I guess they update every so often. Uh -huh. uh, they've moved the edit button to be more reflective of how things are normally done on the internet, which is like a little pencil instead of like clicking on it that says edit. And I Yeah, I I'm sorry. The edit word was more intuitive to me than a, the pencil, but whatever. Yeah. Well, they said they want to try to be more like what the rest of, internet sites are so that all yeah. it, it's consistent so and you possibly i think she said you might have to mouse over it or you might have to click on something to see it so it's up in the upper right hand corner um that was one of the things they've updated a lot of yearbook pictures a lot of yearbook stuff yearbook.com they've also really updated newspapers.com there's they own newspapers.com i guess so there's a lot of new stuff in that so things that you didn't know before um, might be um, have updated now. I kind of wonder if we should be putting a little tag on our people saying I couldn't find it and I know it's got to be somewhere and then putting a tag so that we remind ourselves that every six months we should go back and double check and see if maybe it's been uploaded by now. Yeah. Uh, category view versus record view. It used to have uh, when you do a search, it would come down with all these records. Now it's coming down in categories instead of being like you would see a yearbook.com next to a military record next to a uh, census record next to that, you know, so it'll, it'll go to more like, here's all yearbook.com. Now here's all the military stuff. And now here's the census stuff. It, it's, it's going to bunch it up a little bit more for you. I think uh, there's image filters so that you can filter out and look for certain images instead of like, it's just, cause sometimes I that'll be helpful. Yeah, because sometimes, well, when you upload a photo, you upload, you click, what is this? And you say, it is a photo. But sometimes it'll say, um, um, it depends on the person uploading the picture or the image, because an image can be a certificate. Like if you have a marriage certificate, it's still uploaded like you would upload a photo. Or if you have a, a pitch screenshot from a Bible, it's still uploaded like a photo, but it's not a photo. It's a, it's a document. It's a, it's something like that. So people should be, when they uploading it, they should be saying, this is a certificate. This is a photo. This is a other, or, or this is something, a clipping or whatever. But so what it's supposed to do is instead of looking at a ton of images, thinking you're looking for a photo and actually you're getting a ton of images of certificates so it's it's filtering them so hopefully people when they upload them they click at least that it's important to do that um keyboard shortcuts i, I don't even use those but they're located at the very bottom of the screen to like um click on a shortcut and it comes up with edit or whatever i don't know and then they've added 150 million new card catalogs and they said to constantly you should always look at your card catalog um area and see where it has stuff up that says new because there's there's constantly new stuff and as Deirdre just said they did add a, a lot of uh, French stuff. Mm -hmm. And Missouri, does somebody have stuff in Missouri? They, um, Missouri? I have just a tiny tiny bit. I have a tiny bit also. A marriage. And I, it was a good reminder because I, I don't ever think to go to card catalog and see what's updated. I, I look in card catalog quite a bit if I'm looking for key records or records like, wait, when do Pennsylvania births start? You know, and then I get into the card catalog. Mm. Is that it, Susan? Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. like I mean, you could, and then they talked about the DNA matches, how it's 
it's changed even further, just like what we we did talked about briefly last week that it's mm -hmm. you can get even more granular. But oh, you know what I learned, which I guess was probably intuitive, but the circle with the little dots around it on your DNA percentages, like my dad, he and I guess on mine too, but the German, it breaks it down to which part of Germany because they've gotten enough records DNA. Got it. you know records that they can really define where what regions what areas of germany yeah so of course my mom doesn't have any <laughs> but yeah hey, hey, hey get 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 off and the off. irish um oh. <laughs> had uh Kenny yeah. Donegal as a separate thing for him and, and he's got all sorts of lines that go there but this last time it showed up with the southern part of honey oh. County Donegal which I all, I already knew was people of his but so right. there are others so it's kind of it's kind of cool and they can break county so, mm -hmm. so if anybody ever goes to Ireland go to County Donegal <laughs> I'll take a look. <laughs> so, okay, who wants to go first for the show and tell? We haven't heard from Mary in a while. You got show. I will say about her pretty art behind her. Yeah, yes. I will say my my internet's getting a little choppy, so hopefully I can briefly mm -hmm. go through. Um, I was doing some research this morning and this afternoon and ran into uh, two resources that I just started, just started looking into where I could actually open up and look at um, church records, uh, particular to the region, like my grandmother in, oh. in Bergamon. So um, the, I had the look it up real quick what the websites were because I found it initially I was doing a lot of searching on family search again and just across both families I spent a little time um, on each family member that I'm still looking for and then stumbled on the wiki page and some of the resources and this is where I found um, some of the resources that I told you I was talking about. I'm going to look on my bookmarks. So one is Gen Team, um, which is pretty much particular to like Austria, parts of Germany, uh, Czechoslovakia. And then another what's it called? Page, Wait, what's it called? Um, Mary, what's it here. called again? Um, let me let me see if I can share the the screen and I can I can show you. Uh, let me see. All right, so. March. This is the one, yeah, this is the one uh, well, it's a, that I found. I don't know if anybody's been on it. Is it free? Yeah, it's free. Huh. Find church registers. Um, they currently have Austria, Germany, Poland, Serbia, and Slovenia. So, but you can actually... Data... Go to the map, and if you know where your ancestors came from, are those red dots your ancestors? No, they're um, they're just uh, resources where you can find records. Oh, 
Cool. So, but I haven't been able to, I was looking online. I haven't really been able to find any that are close to Gussing, which I forget where it's at. I'm not gonna get all frustrated, but anyway, this, this website I looked at, so I'm gonna look at it a little more in depth this week. That's it has Slovenia on there. Let me, yeah. Let me get over there. Data. M-A-T-R-I-C-U-L-A yeah, -A -A hyphen online. And they translate everything. They translate everything from whatever language to English. So some of the stuff I was uh, looking at, it's, it's very church records. I was looking at some church records and it's just that, that cursive that you have to kind of learn to look uh -huh. at. So you can differentiate. And some of it's very elegant. Some of it's very, you know, I can actually read it. It's just, I would have to go through pages and pages. There's no way that I can find a family member unless I would go through the whole catalog. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. This looks very so, interesting. So how did you find this again? Um, I was on family search. Um, I haven't really been, I, I do get on ancestry, but I've been really looking through family search. And then I looked through my region of Bergen law in Austria and then checked out the wiki page and like the Bergen law bunch, which I'm already part of. But then I looked at other resources, which was gen team. And then Gen Team, a lot of the records are actually fine through that Marticula website. So I thought, oh, this is this should be a great resource, especially if somebody does have ancestors from that region, or you can find it and maybe find their name and get it translated or whatnot. Yeah, so, I see what you mean. This isn't so searchable. You have to just yeah. click on things and then uh, I guess it's, it's like a scan through it or know exactly like I was looking through like some death record registries and gussing um and may if you would know the day of the year I could read like the dates on the side I'll have to find that again and 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 start combing through that but um because I was trying to look for my grandmother's mother's death when she died and she died in childbirth, whatnot, who knows? Um, I still have all those big gaps and trying to find great, great, great grandparents. And so. Well, this is, I, I just clicked on one thing and I went down to the, and it gave me another link. Then I went to the next link. Oh. Let me show you guys what I found. This is crazy. You mean just this very second you found? Yeah, yeah this is crazy. <laughs> this is like, what? It's so, um, so look at this. Can you see the book? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> this oh. is from the 1700s, it says. Oh, wow. And um, I don't want to click on the other. Can you make it enlarge it? Well, so I doubt any of us could read it. <laughs> I know, but it's just so cool. Okay. Yeah, so like there's there's videos, but yeah. We click on a random page of the book. Let me make it bigger. Huh. Or I could probably go this way too. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. But I mean, this is a really terrific website that yeah. has... Um, Jacob, yeah. I got Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> so Maria. Like, like she just said, you're 1870, I think, just like Mary just said, if you know what you're looking for, I guess you'd find You know it. the date and you have time to look and comb through like three or four pages and you know that that's the particular village. Like I can look at Gussing all day, but there's different areas of Gussing that are more particular and I might be able to find other resources but that's a good, I thought it was a good uh, a website. And then also the, what was it? the Ukrainian Genealogical Society in New Jersey. I went to that virtual conference. 
Mm -hmm. They're doing another conference. I think it's this weekend. And this lady's doing it's free, but you have I I would do a donation, um, doing the bead work. Oh, oh yeah, like intricate bead work. So I'm thinking about doing. It'll be neat to see something like that. You know, if it's not too complicated, yeah. At least to Tamberly's rubbing off on you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. So if you boy, if you were to, if you have if you found like maybe a village, you know. Deirdre, if you were to find that little French village that you've, um, I mean, there may be, who knows? Wait, did this have France in it? I just no. thought it was it No, it was like maybe Switzerland, but on that region, it doesn't go that far yet. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there- It had Germany. Things. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, no France. Well, the French always get everything. <laughs> you no, they everything. don't. Yes, they do. Well, you can see, like what they're, you see what they're doing in France. They're doing that whole uh, that artist piece where they're draping the monuments. They drape it oh. in this um, like recyclable, like greenhouse fabric. Oh no! I and didn't... They, they like cascade it and whatnot look it up it's like it's like a temporary art piece that they do oh, every okay year. what would i look up like kind of big archways in france and france? Uh, what draping yeah. yeah they're draping the whole like it, i forget what it is like it's one of the arches the famous arch in france oh in the trump the, oh i'm just getting a uh, like how to put a Trump daily drapes the yeah but they, yeah they, they're draping it's an art it's an artistic expression and they're roping it and draping it with this. With I'm this not finding fabric. it. Give me something to look at. Wait, let me Paris. find it. Arch it? fabric. What no. was that? What was that? Say it. Spell it. Arc de Triomphe. Arch of Triumph. Did that not help you? A R C. Okay, here it is. Wrapped. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, here it is. Let's see if I see. Okay, so here it is. Yeah, they're wrapping it with this fabric. Yeah. Oh, because it's an artistic piece. Oh, that Chris, though. I didn't know he was still yeah. alive. Oh, I thought he was dead. No, he is dead. Chris Christo. Oh, in tribute to him. Yeah, yeah, he's dead. So, yeah. okay. Well, I told that to my husband. He's like, that's just so French. <laughs> well, they did it here in America. And uh, like, I, I, okay, whatever. I don't know. I don't get, I don't it. get it. <laughs> okay, it, it's nice. I guess it's art as long as it comes down eventually. Um, what are they going to do with all that? Fabric? It's, it's, recyclable. Recyclable. It's, it's recyclable. So it's, oh, I guess if they go over and they say, like we'll have more visitors, yeah. more people to come visit and look at it, and more tourism dollars, and more people appreciating art. Okay, all right. Hmm. <laughs> it's a thing. I wrap something <laughs> in my house. Nobody's gonna come see it. <laughs> hey, you guys! I'm gonna wrap my garage. <laughs> hey, better, t Cindy. You're on mute, by the way. Anyway, and I may have to go out and reboot a different way. So, because I, I went away, I went oh dark. Oh, but if I come back, if I go out again, I'll come back with a different. We have we have an extender, and so I'll try that if that doesn't work. This room seems to have the hardest problem. You sound better. Okay, yeah, you sound better. I don't, so, I don't hear anything from problems. Okay, and look, even my cat's listening. Hi, Kitty. Yeah. Okay, so Mary, are, do you have anything else, or is you done? No, that's it. That's uh, yeah. That's really okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, Deirdre, what you got? Um. Well, I just watched the video um, from that Susan sent, and of course, that's gonna gave me things to do, and then the this matricula. Uh, website uh, that looks interesting because it has the Germany on it for my German grandparents and then um, 
I told my dad, you know, about Facebook and, um, you know, to put up, you know, on a group, a German group to put up the baptismal certificate. And I, I said, just send me the picture and I will post it because he's not on Facebook. And um, I, he said, what he really needs, which, I mean, I suppose it's easy enough to find on family search. I don't know why he is angsting about this so much, but if he just knows what the words are, you know, the categories, you know, but they can do that on Facebook. So, and I just feel like after Susan found that information on Mark's, you know, that it'd be nice to just to have somebody to look at one, say what it is, you know, what the categories are. And then there, maybe there's something unusual, like illegitimate that didn't think about. Oh, and, you know, everybody takes away something different from the, you know, when they watch a video. So I bet Susan did not take this away, but I did the and i think i did mention it last week sorry if i'm repeating but this video that susan just sent um under the new images uh where you can now there's categories and you can see if it's a photo or a document so um she was talking about coat of arms and she specifically said that you know a lot of times they are not legitimate. You're on su mute, Susan. Yeah, I, I, I remember that. She says, yeah, well, the coat of arms may not. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm thinking this is a God thing that I've heard this two weeks in a row. So I'm going to be bummed if my coat of arms is not really real. From it can be real to you. You can just always just say, that's mine now. <laughs> I was like, proud. Adopt it. Adopt it. Adopted, I guess. Yeah, so. it's yours now. <laughs> we did talk about this because then we were talking about the Scottish, Scottish uh, tartans, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And my husband, O'Grady. Yes. Now, like more Scottish than Irish, and yeah, he's not happy about that. <laughs> no. You know, but so Pat's even went less Irish and more Scottish, but a lot of the people in Ireland came from Scotland, you know, yeah. they got shipped there, especially Pat's northern Donegal people, but where O'Grady's were is down at the middle. Well, at least those O'Grady's. Now, maybe they came from the north. And it, true, 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 true. Because we've never researched Tom's ancestors, have we? No, I, and I, I, and I, so I emailed or I texted a screenshot of his new DNA breakdown to his sister and told her to go look at hers uh -huh. and see if it changed. You know, I wanted like a little information here, but she hasn't got back to me. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I have to say it's not of great interest to his family. To Tom or his family, I don't know. They're just whatever. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. <laughs> We're like, I'm interested in your husband's family, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not interested. It's wrong, huh? I know. Yeah, I'm interested in Tom's, especially because because his people were not far from where Pat's were in that county, mm -hmm. County Clare. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, well. Not that they're related, but you know, still they're right. They about the same time, I think, figured out. Yeah. But and where they came from before that, it's hard to say. Yeah. It's really hard to do research in Ireland before 1800. Mm. Oh. So that was all. Okay. Oh, the Zoom wedding. Oh, um, yes. Um, I mean, it was nice, but we missed the first part because there were, I don't know how many of us, a lot of people on Zoom. And 
where everybody's in the chat. I can't hear. Can you hear? So the person, honestly, and I'm a terrible photographer. Oh, I don't even know, Susan, you would have just died. <laughs> you know, it's like the camera shaky. It's like, really, they couldn't even have a tripod. I, you know, for the video, for the Zoom video. And um, people are like telling her from the Zoom, hoping that she sees in the chat, you know, what to do. You know, we can't hear her to push this, do that. So I don't know how, like 10 minutes in, finally, we have volume. So it's just right when the groom is reading his vows that he wrote and the brides. So I didn't hear, you know. We'll have to have the wedding all over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they should at least, uh, if you're going to have a Zoom wedding, you should at least practice or, or something. Have somebody. Yes. My okay, twin tripod. How how can we take the phone and tape it to a chair? <laughs> or something. My twenty three year old daughter, you know, who you know is in the tech age bracket. She's just like horrified. I yeah. Just like, how how can that even happen? Yeah. So, anyway, we but, but they, for the pandemic. They cut off sure. The video before we could even do a toast. It's like okay. <laughs> so I hope that I haven't talked to the newlyweds. I hope they're not terribly upset because, you know, it's bad enough to have your wedding during COVID and then you had wanted, you know, he, they sent out bottles of wine with their label on it. I mean, not wine, champagne. And, you know, you know then should they want to do a toast? Wanted those of us who couldn't attend to be part of it, but. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, their hearts were in the right place. Where was it at? Uh, upper New York. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you, that's, is all, there, that's, all. that's all. All right, Susan. Okay, I got four stories. I'll, I'll hope to do them quick. Okay. The first one was. You can take your time. Okay. <laughs> Here is a photo. <laughs> you I love this you photo. Remember? I do too. Yeah. I think this is great. So what I did, you guys remember that the old one had lines all across it? Yeah. It was in very yeah. bad shape. So what happened is that um, I downloaded the picture. I enhanced it and I re-uploaded it. And what I did is that I had... Um, I uploaded it and I went to the site where they had uploaded the picture, you know, with the bad, with the lines and stuff in it. And I said, I have enhanced this photo. If you would like it, it's on my ancestry site. You know, in other words, I'm saying, Hey, you guys, there's a better copy out there. You you're welcome to it. And then I wrote a note on under the picture saying, I don't know who these people are because it doesn't say which person is who it just says, the guy and his daughters. And this is my side of the family, thankfully. I finally got something from my side of the family. So you, how, how did you send it to him? Like uh, you, through Ancestry.com, you emailed? Yeah, so they had uploaded the photo saying, here's a photo of, of this guy and his daughters. And um, there was a bunch of lines in it and stuff. It wasn't very nice. So I posted underneath that comment because there's a place to comment. I just wrote a comment saying, I've re-uploaded this photo and it's in better shape if you want it. It's on my ancestor beat. So I was just letting him know. So that's, I was just letting him know on the comment thread of their photo to come look at it on my photo and, and you know, it's in better shape. And I got a comment today. Oh, I put that out uh, six months ago. I wrote that comment. <laughs> I was going to say it's been a while and I wonder how often people. I got it last night. I got a comment and she says, she's telling me who she thinks the people are. Oh. And she says, oh, she says, the one with her arm is so-and-so and blah, blah, blah. The others are not daughters, but some other relations. So now I know that it isn't him and his daughter. So that's completely something I didn't know. Oh. And she says, it's one of my favorites. She says, it's such a shame that the negative was damaged. Oh. And she says, and she says that, um, thanks for fixing it. And I'm like, well, so I wrote her back today and I said, I can, you know, you're welcome to take it and use it. If you give me your email, I will give you 
you know, I will email you a copy of it that you could actually print from, you know, if you really like that picture and you want to like put it somewhere, I don't know, I'll, I'll email it to you. And I said, and there's more photos in there that I've done this too. You're welcome to have them. So I just got that. So this is somebody who, it, it's funny how they, she write her, the person who wrote to me is art full home one. So I have no idea who that is. She didn't say like your connection. Mm -mm. I'll have to try to look and see, but I, I, I haven't gotten there. So that just came through. That's cool. So the other three things that are, that are pretty quick. I told you about the, did I tell you last week about the woman who was shot? The woman who was shot. No, I guess I didn't tell you that story. So on Mark's family tree, remember I said, I got it. I got one person contacted me and I spent weeks and we, we did this whole oh, yeah. family. And then a week ago, a little over a week ago, uh, uh, the Wilson side, somebody else contacted me because of, oh, I think it was a photo again. And, um, I'm trying to remember now, but anyway, so her and I have kind of been working together and that was, that was a little, that was interesting. She had a lot of, uh, uh, family tree, but, and her, her ancestry habits looked good. You know, she's using citations. She didn't look like she was somebody leaping out to make wild accusations and stuff like that. Her, her research looks solid. So, um, when I look at the ancestry hits hints, for family trees, if I found hers on it, then I kind of was like, okay, that looks pretty good. Whereas taking just some other strangers kind of work as, as gospel, you know? So anyway, what happened is that um, I spent a lot of time uh, trying to build Mark's family tree on the Wilson side, um, his dad's side, because I have other things I should be doing. And of course I'm gonna ignore them and go do the ancestry because it's a lot more fun. <laughs> So anyway, I had told you last week that Mark handed me a pile of papers. Oh, saying, yes. Here's what my dad had been doing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when I had talked to you guys on Thursday, I hadn't gone through those papers. So since Thursday, I scanned all the papers, everything that was in there. And I just made a folder on my computer. And then one at a time, each document, I'd pull it up, read it and then upload it to Ancestry and so that it was uh, try to make some sense. Like if there was a couple letters and things. So like one of the letters said, oh, so-and-so is this person and she was adopted by that person. And they're, you know, just, it, it, it didn't flow well. It was something written, you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago. So it was just kind of like, oh, well, I, you know, I remember seeing you in you were a little girl and your aunt Marge was there, you know, it's just like, you're like, okay, so there is an aunt Marge, you know, you're trying to, it's, it's like doing one of those cryptic puzzles from the, from a logic puzzle or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's not laid out, born and died, born and died, born and, died. <laughs> and it was handwritten. So there was a little bit of, I had to get over the like, okay, well, what does that say? So as, so Mark came into my office and he was sitting here and I said, check out this letter I just, I, I found. And it was from Marge to Mark's aunt, Marge, to uh, Mark's dad. And one of the things she said was, I was hoping, and this is from like the 70s, I think she's writing. She says, I was hoping that maybe we would get this all figured out. We're getting better at figuring out who's who, what's going on. And maybe we're going to unravel this mystery. And, and I was about to write to so-and-so who's the wife of so-and-so and find out about the story about why dad's mom was shot. But, <laughs> and I'm reading this to Mark just totally out loud. I did. I hadn't even read it, the sentence myself. And I stopped and I said, wait, his dad's mom was shot. And I, I looked at Mark and Mark looks at me and we look at each other. I'm like, his dad's mom is shot. Why was she shot? What, wait, what are you talking about? It was, did he ever know that grandma? No. no. He, 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 she was dead before he. Yeah. She died in 1901. She was shot. <laughs> I wasn't sure if she recovered. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, well, we didn't know anything about it. So I said, okay, who are the people in this letter? And what is it that they're saying? And who, who, who got shot? What? So thankfully I have newspapers.com, right? So I went into newspapers.com and this is a, a person I had. It's Mark's direct uh, line too. It's his, 
his his grandfather's mother, great grandmother. And so I'll show you a couple of clippings and stuff. It's pretty funny because it happened in 1901 in Utah. I don't think it was Salt Lake. It was a smaller town in Utah. And you're you're, you're going, okay, what what happened? And and uh, <laughs> how did that how did that go? Let me pull up the picture. Let me get let me get to it really quick. So as I'm going through this, it's, oh, it's a Wilson. Should we guess? <laughs> uh, Corinda? No, shoot. I should have had this handy. You went deer hunting and it went south. Oh. Well, yeah, you're going, what the heck? You know, what could this possibly be? Mrs. Wilson. Mrs. Wilson. Anyway, I guess I won't show you the screenshot because I can't find them right now. But anyway, the point was, is that first off, you're, you're going... I had to figure out who it was and I built out her family tree and then I got her birth and death. And then I said, okay, 1901. And I know when she's died. So I went to the newspapers.com for that date and I put in her last name. And did you know it was Utah? Yeah. And I knew it was Utah. Oh. So I was able to put the last name in Utah and here comes the story. And there's about seven newspaper articles because uh, there, I guess there's nothing else happening in town. And this is a big deal. So like the first article says, Mrs. Wilson is near death in the hospital after being shot by a boy. Oh, um, no. Okay, what? All right. So you then the next, then you got to find the next newspaper article. So the whole story is being told in newspaper articles. And so I'm trying to get them in order so I can follow the story of what's happening. And it turns out this woman was home. She's 56. 57 she was in her home in utah wherever it was and she's making the bed she's in her bed in a bedroom making a bed and her kids are off at church and she makes the bed and two shots come into the through the door and and hit her one hits her right in the carotid artery of the neck oh, no. and the other one hits somewhere else but didn't hit her and so she manages to get out of the room goes into the front yard stumbling through and falls on the ground in the front yard bleeding profusely a couple of minutes later her sons come over and one of the sons i think is mark's grandfather coming home from church and they find their mom laying there bleeding in the front yard and so uh she says i was shot and i guess she she lived long enough to say that she was making the bed because i thought well how would they know that but she i guess there'd be blood on it so um the stories go on it turns out there was a group of hoodlums they were anywhere from 14 to 16 or 17 they'd gotten a hold of a 22 rifle and a keg of beer and they were out on the town and must have been in the middle of the day if she's if the kids are at church, I guess. I wonder why they were at church and she wasn't. Huh. Yeah, that's another story. I don't know. I it, the boy, they said the boys were at church. So I wouldn't, it might have been a church thing for boys. Oh. That's what I thought. Oh yeah. You know, it didn't because the boys came, it said the boys found her after they came home from church. And there was other children too. They said one of the daughters was with the mother in the hospital for a very long time. So they didn't know how to charge this kid. And, and the kids were all locked up in jail for a while. Not Nobody wanted to say who it was who did the shooting. And then one person said um, he confessed pretty quickly about what had happened. And he was released. And everybody else was in jail. And then they started letting him out on bond. And there was one kid who was, who I guess he didn't have a father or Oh. no means or something and so the others took up a donation to get him out of jail so that, that he wasn't the only one stuck there but the but the kid who did it i can't even pronounce his last name is slob slow shovenly or something like, i don't remember so he's 16 and he was he, they were drunk and and he was shooting and it wasn't close it was 50 i don't know i can't remember like 100 yards away or something just shooting and shot into this house or shot in the direction of the house and just happened to hit her artery and she was in the hospital and they didn't know if it was murder or if it was um, manslaughter or if it, they were trying to decide how to charge him turns out that um um he, i found an article 
yeah, the next year, 1902, that said that he had been found guilty, but they had removed the sentence and that he, they took it away. So, but the, almost all the newspaper articles are about the kid and well, about the situation, but not hardly anything about her, even her obituary didn't have a lot of information about her, I don't think. So that was, that was a little bit of an interesting thing. I had never heard of that. I didn't know anything about it. I went and looked at Mark's cousin, the one who had emailed me, and she had the she had that information on her tree, but she didn't have the detail of it. She didn't have all the newspaper clippings. I think she had like one or two. And whatever she had, they were blurry. The newspaper clippings were blurry. So I went and I made fresh copies of everything so you could read it better. So that was one. Uh, another thing I was going to tell you is, so I was again building mark's uh family tree and i said oh so your dad had all these siblings do you do you know any of them you know what do you know of them and i said what about john i don't have any information on john he goes no i don't know anything about uncle john I'm like you know well john i they think they call him jack he goes oh, i don't know it sort of sounds familiar <laughs> so i went and i looked and he died in 1940 three he was a pilot in world war ii and he was shot in um over the sea and his body was never recovered so he's buried at sea and so he was a world war one I, I mean world war ii um pilot he got out of high school went to college um graduated from the university of utah was in the, the phi beta something something and then he went to war and he died and um World War the II. family completely yeah completely forgot him there's no mention of him anywhere wow. mark said he never heard the story nobody's brought it up to him and yeah. so i did find that his father mark's father because all these in the documents this is there his father was a deacon in the mormon church mark wow. there's a certificate for it mark says i'd never heard that i said here's the certificate 1933 and then um doesn't that mean that he had to have gone on as a missionary i don't know if it does do you guys know? I don't know when that started yeah i, I think it's been I, a long time hasn't it i honestly don't know how all that works except for i think it's usually right out of high school i think you're called a deacon when you do go on a missionary oh but i'm not positive of that Oh, maybe I'll ask somebody who will come yeah. across that. But so he was gone for so so he has the documentation that he was 1933. He was a deacon, and Mark said that his dad had a, like a purple heart or something, and his dad would never tell him anything about it. So he finally said, um, "He goes, I don't even I don't know anything about what happened then." So I found an, when Mark's dad died in 1989, there was a general retired general lived in the area where they lived in uh, palace Verdes in la and he had written a letter saying you know that he had served on he says my friend so-and-so served honorably blah 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 and he had a not a purple heart but a one of the other awards for service anyway so it was there was all this military information so i made these notes on my ancestry that i got to go check the Eventually, I got to go over to full three and see what information I can get on that as well. So that was that was fascinating. Nobody's how odd that you would think that a pilot in World War Two, and it is he died in forty three, and that just wasn't talked about. It just the story was gone. I think that would be the opposite. You think they'd be always talking about uh, the hero, you know, the young hero, you know, but nothing. And then the the last thing I want to say is um oh it was you know it's interesting and this happened in my family a lot too is how many people are named for politicians um marks and my family happened all the time too in, in america not the slovenians obviously but uh, <laughs> this guy's name is john woodrow wilson uh -huh. and then his other is his, uh, his other is uh george washington wilson I've got a George Washington Smith. Yeah, it says, I think it's a very common thing where they would name them after. I guess if you got 15 kids, you ran out of things to name them, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> and here's the other thing. So, um, Mark's 
grandfather's father it was George Washington Schaefer. So, so I'm, I'm reading, I'm doing a little bit of his, just expanding just these lines. And it, I found an obituary for George Washington Schaefer. And the obituary is written by his daughter. So, you know, keep that in mind that this is written by somebody. So it may be embellished a little bit. But George, the story is, is that when George Washington Schaefer in 1850, was born in 1855, his family moved from Indiana to Iowa. And while they were moving, they moved right after the child was born. So it was 1956, 1856, sorry. They were, they left in um, a covered wagon pulled by oxen. I never, I've heard of that, but I've never known any family member that had. We were no. talking about travel the other day. So they came through and it really wasn't even that far. I mapped it out on a map, a Google map. It's like a seven hour drive now, but it took them days. And as they were coming across the Mississippi River, the mother, George Washington Schaefer's mom, was holding him on the cart and he was an infant and she was holding him. And then the oxen became upset and she, it says she jumped off. I guess she thought she was going to fall. So she jumped off with the child in her arms and fell and died. But the baby oh was saved. Oh my God. I know. So George Washington Schaefer was the last child. And I looked and I double checked and he sure as heck was the last child. Um, the guy eventually marries again once he gets into Iowa. But they, but the, according to the obituary, they said, you know, they grieved over her, had a funeral for her. I guess they buried her alongside the road or something. I don't know. Or maybe there's some place somewhere. And then they went and they continued on their way. But she had she had fallen off this wagon that the oxen had been had been uh, pulling them through and she died. She must have been, I think she was 33. She had like seven kids. <laughs> I can't even imagine that right now. <laughs> Just imagine. My, you know, my oldest is 33 and he has, you know, it's like, you're behind, man. You still have seven kids by now. Or That's like you? somebody like modern day. That would be like somebody in order to escape a wreck, like jumping out of a car as a child. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. like, no. survive I, how far is that? Survive. How, how far would that be to fall? I don't know. Yeah. But the, so, so the woman who's writing this is the daughter of George Washington Schaefer. So he was told the story as a little boy obviously growing up that was the family story and then she heard it so it may be embellished and maybe yeah. maybe maybe the cart fell on top of her maybe right. the, maybe the oxen you know stepped on her or i i don't know but it was just like it's a great I mean, story i love yeah. social history i adore it because it just shows these normal people going about their lives making up their bed and the next thing you know there's a you're dead or your yeah, your your family is trying to get from Indiana to Iowa to settle. One of the things I was thinking of doing, and I'm not going to do this right now, but I was wondering about what, how much better of a life that they have in Utah as opposed to being in Indiana. I mean, was that a really? To me, it seems <laughs> like you're in Indiana and then seven hour drive away. Yeah, I don't know. And you got to get these oxen, and you know, was that a a good move. The guy ended up working, the, the man who moved, the George Washington Schaefer's father, Peter, he be, he worked, uh, I think, for the railroads, and I think he was an engineer. Well, so there I, I think, but couldn't they have done that in Indiana? He, I, I don't know. I, I want to kind of do a little more work on it and just think about well, why people true. move and how, how big of a deal that was. He's got seven kids. One of them's a newborn. And yeah, but if it, he was Mormon, I don't know. Because if he was Mormon, that would have been, you know, closer. With the call to the motherland, or you know. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of Mormonism in that family. No, you know, I don't know because this is the Schaefer family. The other were the 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 Wilsons were the Mormons. Well, the Wilsons were the, uh, I, but I, the Wilsons married. I, they married recently. I mean, they married one generation ago. Oh, two generations ago. So not Mark's dad's 
mother, dad and mother, their family were Mormons, but Mark's dad was a Mormon, but he, Mark never knew that. He knew he was from a Mormon family, but he didn't realize his dad was Mormon. His dad was like nothing Mormon, like smoked and drank and, you know, that kind of thing. He wasn't, it didn't look like anybody who had, had yeah. been raised that way. So it was, it's just fascinating to me. And it's just an interesting story because he had, Mark had no idea. And of course yeah. I had no idea. And what you just uncover. So that is my stories. I think I have everything written down here. Find a grave, covered wagon, by the way. Anyway, so that's it. Interesting week. Yeah. <laughs> interesting stuff. Oh. It, the more, the more you look, I guess, the more you'll uncover your, the family history. What about Jerry Andrus? I worked on scanning last night. I put on um, um, Caspian. My son got Disney Plus and he did the account thing. So I put on uh, the old Narnia movies, the um, Prince Caspian and the Don Treader. And I put them on in one oh, screen. The so Narnia could... movies are on? Oh, I they're on know. Disney. It's Disney. I didn't realize that. And so, so, I, so I'm so I'm on my other screen scanning and I'm tr I'm watching the movie and I'm scanning so I'm not looking at <laughs> I don't want to be sitting there all absorbed into the scans and looking at it because I'm just not getting it done so I'm up to 1990 which isn't very far I did two years yesterday and I haven't done anything for like two weeks because <laughs> everything else is a little busy yeah. but it's it, you get distracted and it's not like as if you have this huge um, deadline or anything and i put i took a lot of that jerry under stuff out and put it do you were over cindy you saw i put it out on a shelf out there so that i can actually walk yeah. in my office right. it was it's still crowded in here but not as bad as, as i had boxes you guys huge heavy boxes of paper just sitting behind chairs and stuff and you can't can't move just awful. you should go into my garage because my husband took up a quarter over it and he built a paint booth because he's painting uh, bicycle frames. Oh, uh, really, really? Yeah, nice. custom painting a bicycle frame for. Oh, somebody. yeah. Like he's like paints. He's done like motorcycles and all kinds of stuff. And yeah. Good stuff. So he's, well, that's yeah. good if he's using it for an something. Entrepreneur. Yeah, he is. Oh. Yeah, he's an artist. He like learns how to do stuff by watching YouTube videos, and, and he oh. does it they're like art they're not like he's yeah he's, he's, going, he's, gonna, he's, he's gonna do a special uh bike for he was an air force uh, uh officer navy i'm sorry navy yeah your husband's like navy yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't get those wrong mary yeah. air force is no, not it's not army and it's nothing <laughs> yeah. so why don't you give him half the garage Huh? Well, that's his garage. That's not even mine. The rest are full of his toys. Yeah, they're not toys. If you use if you use them, it's okay. The problem I have is whenever it's just there, and it's like, like you get those exercise machines, and you hang your clothes on them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we just got two big motorcycles in there among, among lawn and garden stuff, and now this big paint booth, and then you know, got the beer fridge, and so oh. <laughs> it's packed yeah <laughs> well i tell you mine is looking so much better every freaking day yesterday i i my poor garden has been so neglected see i brought in i brought a sunflower pretty oh, and then wow. i also have these these are cac uh succulents that are on there i just brought them in i said oh these well they'd fallen off and I, I thought them. they were fake susan oh, no they're real and um wait, mark has grown a bunch of sunflowers in the backyard it looks so beautiful but i'm worried because they're just at the point where they're starting to get to kind of wilty and then it's gonna look so icky out there because it's not gonna have mm. i told let's plant some more but they're they're not big enough yet you want to keep the cycle going through and um so yesterday from morning till late i was in my garden i got a whole yard waste thing of, of weeds and cuttings and so much to do but boy my backyard at least three-fourths of it is smiling right now it's, all happy. it's like oh thank you for giving me some of your attention still got I've still got stuff out there in the garage in the backyard that needs to be moved all right are we so done my turn an hour yeah. later 
an hour later. It's my turn now. I hope it was interesting. I can get rid of this post-it. Okay. So my first thing is about my eyes, which bears hugely on genealogy. So, you know, you get, you get, I, after last week, I went off to see my corneal guy and, um, the cornea looks, you know, sort of a good news, bad news thing. The cornea looks great. Uh, it's clear. He can see through it. He can see this and that. And, you know, it's holding up well. The pressure is a little, mm, but, you know, the other guy's watching that. And they're working on that. And it, it's okay. Um, and he added back in, well, the time before and then this time, the glaucoma drops I had been taking before all this. So, um, but the part that's not so good, I asked him about uh, travel because I, I was thinking of trying to get some traveling in next spring, summer, fall. And I knew with this corneal transplant that at some point he would take out the stitches in such a way uh, to help things get better, you know, recover and then the stitches would help. Uh, and he kind of more or less said that that probably wasn't gonna help me much. That that taking the stitches out sort of fine tunes people that are, you know, 2030 and it makes it 2035. And that um, I probably wasn't, I mean, I said, well, I, I don't expect that because I've never had that. But he, I, he said he didn't think I was gonna recover a whole lot more. And I said, you mean not even to the, 2060, 2070 I had before, which was maybe a year, year and a half ago. And he said he didn't think so, that, that I've got 2200 vision right now in that surgery eye. And that's more or less where it's probably gonna be. I mean, it may improve some, but you know, not, not much. Um, and he, he told me that because he, he said he didn't want me to have false hopes or false expectations which I appreciate, you know, I have always wanted to know exactly what was going on. Um, so it, the positive side is that both eyes are beginning to work together. They weren't at all before because there was so such a difference, but I, I have to work at it because this eye is still so much blurrier. Um, but the thing about it is that when I got out to the car, I really expected I'd burst into tears or something, and I didn't. And I, I thought about it, and I realized that knowing is so much better than it being hanging on uh, and yeah. wondering what's going on. And, and I, it's been seven months since the first of these surgeries, and I've managed. I mean, I've been on the computer, I, you know, doing this and that and Terrible. writing my reports and, you know, managing not well. And I've developed more and more compensations and adaptations. And one of them being that sometimes I can only do something for about 15 minutes and then it's way too frustrating and I have to stop and do something else and then come back to it. But it's sort of like, okay, well, that's how it is. Now I'm going to get on with the rest of my life, you know? And, and I know the parameters. And I've always said I wasn't going to let this stop me from traveling. I just needed to know what the parameters were going to be. So um, in that case, I'm actually looking into some cruises. So, you know, at some point. Um, Wait, so you can go? I thought you said. Yeah. Oh, no. So what? because that was swinging around, sorry. The whole conversation was, can I go on arranged trips because of this? You thought you were going to have to have this, the stitches. stitches. Yeah. yeah. Not said, because you couldn't see, but because you thought you were going to have to have surgery next right. spring or something. And he said, he said basically, do whatever you want. We can work around it. I think what he was saying is, because you should go while you can. You know, I mean, that was the inference. And well, that's the truth know, with all of us. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. That is true. That's true. And the, um, 
Yeah, so I'm a Moderna person, so I'm waiting to hopefully get my booster shot path gets his Friday. Hopefully I'll get mine. Oh, soon. I get my Friday too. A Moderna or a, oh, my booster. a, Pfizer, a Pfizer booster. I have a Pfizer booster scheduled tomorrow at one. Yeah, I was going to say the Moderna is not approved yet what? for the booster, right? The booster, no. No, I know. That's why I'm waiting before. I mean, I, part of me is like, oh, just go. And then because there's a couple of drop and go kinds of cruises in the next few weeks. But I kind of think I should wait until is I Is Pat that. Pfizer in your Moderna? Yeah, he's Pfizer. He gets his So he's getting his booster Moderna. tomorrow? Yeah. What time? At 2.45. Oh, Prime I'm Care. at 1. At Prime Care? I'm going over to where that, the, where I got my other shots, where it's behind the uh, osteo, where they, you get your feet. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, that's, I that's where I got my shots. That's where I got mine. Too. Yeah, over off off of Romy Lane, right? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. off of on Abbott. On Abbott, you know what? He should check that because I think he's. They sent me a thing in the. They sent me yeah. an email saying, you "Right, know, no, you're, you're due," and I'm like, "Okay." So I clicked the boxes, and they said, "Which yeah. time Friday was the earliest appointment?" I'm like, "Hell yeah!" yeah. <laughs> I'll so, take the earliest appointment. Absolutely, I'm Moderna, so that may slow us you're, down. You're supposed, anyway. to, supposed to last longer, I think, Moderna. They think. Oh, well, that's good. But, okay. But I, swinging around, he basically said, go do what you want to do. Yeah, go do what you want. Yeah, yeah, so I'm working on that. Um, but I also am even more motivated to get this darn Kilgallen and Stanford larger report done. Mm -hmm. So I've been dutifully working on that. And th there's eight siblings and I'm now down to sibling six i'm almost done with sibling six wow so oh that's that's those. close yeah well to getting them done and then there's other sections but they're kind of already written so hopefully i will work on this and uh, speaking of interesting things uh, the kilgallen one i was working on today uh i knew he fought in world war one but he was in an uh arrow uh unit so, so aero support unit. I don't know what a that is. A E R O, like airplane, oh. like in yeah. World War One. And he wasn't the pilot. Their unit was was a support group. They went to France and built runways or something. I mean, you know, hangars. Oh. So, I I thought that was interesting. So, um, it is interesting. Yeah. So see, there's another occupation. Um. So yeah. So I've been working very hard on the kill gallons and we'll continue to work on them. Um, what else? Okay, so back to what we were talking about last week. Yeah, I'm curious. So I did get onto the tree and made a tree. Remind using... Mary, because she might not know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. So Mary, I was working, um, I can't even remember how I got into that. The sweet, so... John Sweet. Yeah, I know that. Oh, okay. So uh, a DNA match came up that led me to two other DNA matches that had in their tree the gun drum surname, G-U-N-D-R-U-M, gun drum. And I knew it was familiar, so I went looking, and it was in John Sweet's tree. So John Sweet is part of that larger sweet group that I can't really connect to anybody but themselves. But I made a big tree of the ones that had um, had trees using a technique Susan helped and Tamberly helped me put together. And I was able to make a tree that had the surname Byers in it. But John Sweet himself and one other guy didn't match into that. They only matched each other. And the way they matched each other was in this gun drum surname. So I started working, trying to put everything together and it was really convoluted, but I got to the point where I realized that um, the gun drum surname married into the Schaefer line and the Schaefer line was descended from um, 
pub, actually I did it the other way around, in these two people that were the matches, not only did they have Gundrum in common, they had Cobb in common. And I knew that name too, which was one of my Smith lines on my father's side. And I took it all back down. I found where three Gundrums married three Schaefers. Can you so, believe that? That's I crazy. Know, but they did. And I researched the Gundrums pretty extensively. So I thought, so, but Susan suggested I do an ancestry tree, which I've not done. And it was actually a good experience to, to try it um, because I hadn't. And it, I have mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, it is easy to add documents to a person in a tree. And some documents, and this is, I'm not experienced, so you all may know better than me, some documents put some of the facts in, like births or deaths, but they, they didn't put like an obituary. It didn't put anything in from that. So I would still have to go in and add. Oh, you mean like if the obituary has some doc, some information on it, it doesn't add like all of it, like survived right. by a son or whatever. Right. The way I do it is I, I have multiple screens. So I'll pull up the obituary on one screen, the uh -huh. ancestry on another screen. Just and then I will open it up on another screen, another ancestry. Like you could open up multiple ancestries. Right. right. And so I will just go from the obituary. I'll say, okay, and he has a brother and I'll type it in. Right. So I just go and do it that way so that I right. get all, And then I go and I hit when it says, is, does this match a person in your account? I say, yes. And then it uploads the document to the person, but I have to hand do yeah okay so 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 you're not doing anything wrong that's just something ancestry doesn't make it easy for you to but the one thing that i would think would be cautionary and i think i've seen it with other people is that when ancestry has belief and it says related 10 related documents to the person you start clicking through them and the gun drums is where i started from and i knew all the documents because i had done this research um, but I could see that there was some that weren't quite right. Mm -hmm. and, and I knew that, but it'd be really easy to just click them all. And, and so you'd have to still do good genealogy research and, and judgment. So um, I took, let me see if I can bring that up. Um, I think I left it out. Let me see. I just have to get something now. Okay. Let me see if I can do the share screen right here. Um, hold on, let me see. Dun, 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 dun. Is that where I got it? Okay. Um, let's see if that. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, wait, maybe it's in here. Can you see that? Nope. No, okay, I, I don't know how to, I shared the screen. Nope. I know, I shared the screen and then I went down below to bring up, you know, a web page, and that doesn't work apparently. Okay. Um, now I probably lost you guys, okay. Um, how do I get something to go on to the share screen page? You have to I mean, tell it what page you want to be. When you hit share screen, let me, let me do yeah. it so I can see what it says. Okay, when you hit share screen, right. a big white window should come up that shows right. all the different tabs that you have open or right. different screens you have open. Right. And you should just click on that window that you want to share. So if it's, um, is, is the, it's, not, is it open? Uh, the, thing you want to share? The, this, the whiteboard is up with a whole bunch of things on it, but not this. Yeah, you don't want a whiteboard. It should be, um, no, well, the bottom no, it'd be a white screen. Okay, all right, so I've got, for me, I've got the window open. No, I don't. 
All right, well, this may not be worth all this time. It should be under my tree, right? Okay, well, never mind. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, okay, so stop sharing. Where do I stop sharing? Okay. Okay. I'm not sharing now. No. Right? Okay. All right. So I made the tree and I started off with the, the six Schaefer children, the three Schaefers who married the three Gundrums and then the three other Schaefers, thinking I would look for their marriages. Maybe those surnames rang a bell, the three I didn't have. One didn't marry, one I couldn't find that they marry and one I did find and that was um it, it didn't mean anything but you know so then I went tried to go up further back Schaefer's because I'd done the Cundrums pretty well I went back up a generation to Schaefer's and it took me a while to find it because the Next generation up was a James Schaefer and a somebody Seidel, James Seidel, I think. And I kept finding James Seidel related to a surname Caskill and Schaefer not and this and that. Finally, I figured out that Jane and James must have divorced and she married right away and took her son, James Schaefer, and he was listed under Seidel or Caskill. Oh. Under Ka I'm oh sorry, my gosh. Under How did you do that? Not only that, but James, the father, married two other times. <laughs> so we've got this James with all these different marriages. And, and I thought, I don't know if there's children, and that's way more than I want to do yeah. right now because I really want to work on the Kill Gallants, you know? Yes. So. <laughs> So I, I said, okay, I'm setting this aside. I, it's been a good experience to learn the tree. Oh, and then the other thing is I wanted to do a descendancy chart from the tree. And in my Roots Magic, I click on a person and it's, you can say descendancy list. And it would take like, for example, um, James Schaefer and his son, Leslie, and his six children, and there are the children, because I added a few children, and it would be a, this wonderful descendant chart. But I couldn't see that, that the tree would do that, the ancestry's tree would do that. Um, and I wanted to see what I actually had. Um, so you're talking about like, uh, let, me, let me see if this is what you're talking about. It would be a list. So no, not don't. like this, where you're seeing the people, not this kind of tree, where it's descendants. Well, like, maybe, but I couldn't even where you, get that. Where you took, take the oldest member and then right. chose who's. Then, right. So you can also do it this way, which yeah. is where it goes this direction. Right. And, that's and it what builds I out. So if I hit the other, if I hit the other, I guess that would do what you just showed. So it says um, under where it says the tree, right? On the left hand side, upper left hand side, right here. Can you see that? Yeah. My mouse yeah. is moving. There's one that goes right to left if you click on it. Okay. And then and there's one it. underneath it that goes up and down. Okay. And um, I guess you have to decide which person you want it to start with by clicking on them first. I don't okay, use this feature good. a lot because I find it just kind of cumbersome. Well, I just wanted to see what I had actually- Yeah, thought. that makes sense so you can kind of see where you're at. Right. And then I think there's a way of- um, I guess I'm used to the list format, that you know, it's just a nice- So memory. if you go, oh, Susan, yeah, there, tree search, you, we're gonna do it. That should have a, that by alphabet. Yeah, Cindy. but that's like the other, but that's not- List of all people. The list of descendants, that's just right. the list of- of everybody that say oh last yeah day. yeah so. um yeah so there probably is a way of doing it i i just never have done it because i don't here's okay. tree overview let's see again yeah i didn't find oh, there's family group sheets 
right Where'd here under the tree it's this family group sheet let me see it's gonna is that something new there. no mm. i've seen it before but i've never really used but, it but from the from your tree right well you got to tell them which person you want to start no with. but but then how did you get that again i've got my it was under there. under family tree i clicked on the name of the family yeah. in the upper left hand corner and right. it's this tree overview Media yeah. gallery, all hints, and then trees. No, that's not how I did it. Yeah. How'd you do it? Yeah, that's how I did it. Let me see. Let me go out of this and then come back. Okay. Trees. Because I'm sharing it, it takes a little longer. Mm -hmm. I go to the family tree. Mm -hmm. It's loading. And then yeah, and then you click on the family name of the tree that you want to you wanna expand. And one of the settings, the bottom one says family group sheet. Okay. And I guess there might be a setting in here somewhere that allows you to, to um, see like oh, yeah. mom and dad, all our kids, you know, like a family sheet that we used to use all in the back in the okay. older days. Oh, I bet yeah. you there's somebody's doing not, that that's still not that's like a family that's a married couple and their children yeah. is what a family so i guess you want view tree and then I think it does it and then pick whoever it is you want to you want yeah. to be in person you can see there's a whole bunch of work for me to do there's trying to give me a whole bunch of uh, sure. um but it only goes back i mean i could click on down you know the sun to the sun to the sun but this this is just a really convenient thing in my you know yeah. so um know everybody in there I, they probably have something where you could do that because that is the traditional way of doing it and i would think they'd want to do something that was familiar mm -hmm. to people except for this website kind of look i would like to see that too where you have like a person person and then you can just have it and you could print right. it or it whatever shows, it shows or sideways or for children and then and they're like number one and then number two is their children yeah three is. I, I think i've seen it somewhere but i i have it it's not really so, and roots magic roots magic has updated finally from root seven to eight which oh. i've downloaded and not study um but Jan is going to study it and she'll teach it to me. I'm not good at when buttons are where they're supposed to be now. Um, let's see, what else? I guess that's the big thing is I did do the tree and I've been working on the kill gallons. And oh, and there's one guy in searching, which I actually am going to have to write a letter to that has, um, he came up was in, in a Smith search. I guess it was. And he's got a couple of Smiths, my father's side. Ah, I know. So there's this guy, um, Chris Hughesoven, who's my cousin's, my father's cousin's son. I guess he's my, anyway, he's, he's a close connection. I knew the name instantly. I haven't written him, I should. Uh, but I'm afraid I'd get into the exchanging information that I don't have time for right now. <laughs> but in searching for his man, he comes up with a couple of Smiths and he comes up with this guy named Brooks Gunsell. And I look him up. So he's got these Smiths and he's got um, one other I'm not real sure of. And then he's got all of the sweets. John Sweet. He does. Yeah. So it's like he's got Smiths and sweets in the same thing, but he doesn't have a tree. Or he, yeah. And his matches are the ones I know, you know. Have you tried, do you wanna, did you say you're gonna write to him? I'm gonna have to, I don't see how, I look, I tried to look, see even just his name as a match somewhere in some tree and it didn't come up, so. I, I guess I'm going to have to write him and hope. Unfortunately, he hasn't been on for a year. So, 
I'll hope, hopefully I'll write him. I mean, hopefully he'll respond. So. Well, some people get the email. I know I do. Uh -huh. They'll say, you have a message. Right. So even though he hasn't been on for a year, maybe he'll, he'll say, yeah. I'm really curious about why somebody be writing to me right now. Right. And I'll put my email address in there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. So How frustrating. Yes. They have the information you want and they're just like, eh, I'm not that interested. <laughs> I, I hate the people that put, you know, a tree in it themselves and their parents and they private everything. You're like, <laughs> there's an awful lot of people out there that are terrified that somebody's going to find out something about themselves. Yet, everything, everything is open and they've got like the private thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so my search goes on on that. Okay, so what shall we do next? Shall we start the? Well, it's two thirty. I'm. Okay. I, I don't have my um, occupation thing done. So well, I, I have mine done. done. You have one, Mary. Uh, Deirdre. I you do. Have, I. I honestly, I thought there would be more information and I feel like maybe it was me that was not a good researcher, but um, anyway, I mean, I do have stuff, but I- okay. Well, hold on, hold the thought. Mary, do you have stuff? Do you have- you all yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't hear anything because the whole I it everything froze. Oh, so we're talking about what to do next and it was so interesting that we just said, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, so, video. <laughs> so um <laughs> so important. So so we're deciding what to do. <laughs> Susan says she's not ready. I'm ready. Deirdre has some things. I'll be right back, do. you guys. Don't start anything yet. All right. And then Mary, we're what just seeing the water about how much do you have something to um for the occupation. occupation for occupation yeah yeah i had i had a few um okay well wait don't start it until susan gets back so maybe what we could do it sounds okay you froze my, yeah oh. see i keep on freezing <laughs> yeah. um so yeah, <laughs> maybe what yeah. we could do first of all wait until susan gets back but maybe we could start with you two um, and, and see where we're at. Okay. I have actually could go pretty long. So, um, or we could do mine and save your guys for next week. So, but you're here now. So yeah. Maybe you I'm should do yours. Do mine. I don't think it'll be too long. Is your, how long do you think yours will be, Mary? More than a half hour? Who? Me? Yeah. No. Oh, no. I probably have like maybe 10 minutes. I'm sorry. It keeps okay. like out. And All right. So what do you guys, we'll do the two of you when Susan gets back. Okay. Okay. Since, since you're here and then, because mine can go on for a while and, um, and, I, and then I can do mine next week. So you're frozen, Mary. Yeah. Derek, yeah. My, I might have to shut my computer off. I mean, my uh, video. Well, maybe if it works a little better, I'll see how. Yeah. Improves it. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll wait until. Did you have visuals, or are you just going to talk to us? I, I really don't have any visuals now. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, then just talk. Yeah. So while we're waiting for Susan to come back, how are things in North Carolina? Yeah. Fine. Yeah, fine. Nothing really new. We're just getting ready, hopefully, to get some rain. But honestly, we have like fronts on each side of us, so we might see a little rain. But we've just been, you know, yeah. It's so weird how you're in that dry zone. It sucks. I hate it. And in a way, it's a blessing because when we get like hurricanes and whatnot, we don't get well, power. We still have power. So 
Yeah. So it's kind of a blessing, but at the same time, it's not good if you're a gardener. How much okay. rain do you get in your neighborhood uh, per year? I don't know, Sean. How much do you think you get? Usually we get a fair amount. Oh. A, a good enough amount where we're not in any sort of like extreme drought. We did have somewhat of a drought last uh, spring, uh, but nothing like California. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so Susan, what we've decided is Mary and Deirdre are gonna do theirs. And and then I'll do mine next week. And me and Tamberly maybe when she's back. So maybe I'll maybe I'll be done. And maybe you'll be done. Yeah. Okay, so which ones go first? Mary, maybe we should go with you actually, because if you're having problems, so while well, we got you. Yeah. Um yeah. Well, what I, what I do know from um, from growing up and then from speaking to my mother um, was that my grandfather, uh, Sean, please don't stop talking and I can't, you're too, playing and everything and I can't hear. We like can hear you. No, because I'm in the kitchen, so he's clanging around. And it's loud. Thank you. <laughs> so um, from what I remember um, from speaking to my mother, uh, on my dad's side, my grandmother uh, came over to this country and she eventually uh, worked in a cigar factory um, in Copley. And she Stopped working there when she developed asthma. Um, um, from I guess the whatever was in the the mills and whatnot, and then she had her children and kind of was a homemaker and whatnot. And um, my dad's father, he worked in the cement mills, um, just a hard labor, and uh, yeah. And then on my mom's side, they all worked in coal mines and what's really like I found somewhat interesting um, and I don't know this like so on ancestry when you're looking at a profile of a of a certain um, particular person and you're looking at their life story because I never really paid attention to the life stories um, but are they auto-generated Susan, one of them is like if you click on the 1930 census and the 1940 census there's a feature right now that'll say would you like to add um like it'll say their education level home ownership and it'll say would you like to add this to their life story and you can click that button that's really new and so it'll yeah. come up in there plus you can edit your life story and that's what i'm planning on doing once i feel like i'm kind of done with the family's is going through and just editing it. You, you hit the edit feature and then you just say, say what you want to say, tell it in a story. So it's auto-generated most of the time, but you can edit it yourself. You can edit it, yeah. Cause it's like, I was looking at like my mother's, um, father's mother, the one um, that married twice. Like the first husband's not even mentioned, but there's no marriage record though. So that kind of makes sense. But just looking at how, when you look on her profile, you can see that the husband, he's the first one. And then the second one was the one that she remarried. And um, <clears throat> so, uh, but yeah, they worked in the coal mine. And uh, my grandfather ended up moving up to Connecticut to work for General Electric. And um, one story that I do have about my, my grandfather working uh, uh, when my mother was very young, he had gotten part of his finger amputated from a, a press or whatnot. And um, he spent many, it wasn't his fault, so, he ended up uh, 
getting some money out of it. Huh. Which he took that money and he bought my grandmother a fur coat. <laughs> Which I think is still somewhere. Fur coat. Yeah. Hey, take one of my fingers. <laughs> yeah, she wanted a fur coat, and that was so big. That was big. Like even when I was growing up, we had, we had like rabbit fur and and you know fur coats. Mm -hmm. um, it was big. Do you remember the Price Is Right and they used to give away free fur coats and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. And I remember <laughs> thinking all those people would be like you see these people and they're just wearing their like almost sweatpants on the show and they're like and you get a burger and you're like oh yeah she's gonna wear that out somewhere. Yeah. and now i think who oh, you know you can't give away a burger. right well now i'm just thinking about the pain of you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so um uh I was told that story and that my uh, my grandfather helped build uh, the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And he actually used to travel on it before it was open to oh. go visit his mother. Yeah. Huh, that's cool. So, and uh, yeah. So that pretty much was occupations in my family. And it, it very much aligned with, especially on my father's side, um, the book that I purchased on all the people that immigrated. Um, the majority of people from Gusing, Bergenlong immigrated to Copley. And huh. I was briefly, yes, I was briefly looking up a ship manifest with my grandmother on it. And her cousins were on it as well. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. how old were they? That, that was when she came over. I think it was like uh, she was 17, 18, maybe when she came over. I can't remember the actual. So, it didn't have occupation on there? No, no, no. But uh, she was, I know that, uh, I forget what census it was. It said that she worked in the cigar pack. No, it was on her marriage license. Her occupation. Yeah, their occupations were on their marriage licenses. So, yeah. Yeah, been awesome. yeah. so that's my, uh, my occupational. Your um, grandfather or whoever who helped build the turnpike, Pennsylvania yeah. turnpike, do you know what kind of task he did? Um, he was in charge of uh, you know what? I don't know. Yeah. You know, um, what I was thinking would be interesting is that there's probably all kinds of photos of um, the building of that turnpike and and you know, different stages and maybe even of the cigar factory. It, it just historical photos. It'd be I don't know. I think I would I would be interested in looking at those. But I, I to know that your grandparents worked there walk those streets and kind of you know. my grand I know um when my grandmother was still living she literally had dish towels that were old cement mill bags that she still used I mean oh, she was so frugal she was so frugal she was still darning socks like I darn you know, my she, socks <laughs> yeah she had a lot of like she had a lot of like incontinent issues and she wouldn't wear diapers she would just mm -hmm. like Make it, make it. If not, you know, you clean it up kind of. She was in her 90s, you know, when she passed away. But I remember one time I bought over a friend and um, <clears throat> he was just a friend of mine, but he came over and he was, we were peeling apples and she really liked him a lot. because She could tell that the way that he peeled an apple, he was, he like was very, very, uh, meticulous about it and he just peeled the skin off and saved most of the apples and she really liked <laughs> them because of the way that he used to peel an apple yeah, she was very frugal very uh I'm with her though on that did, did literally... he become a serial killer <laughs> no, <laughs> apples and potatoes don't waste it yeah. yeah we were my parents made a well my parents my mom and her family they made quilts and stuff out of sacks you know flower sacks and stuff oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm still that way. I still think it would be yeah. 
I, I, I got that frugal gene, I guess, too. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Our family. Now it's trendy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were trendy. Before. Oh, we were trendy before it was trendy. <laughs> 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 so, I don't know yeah. anything about um, Pennsylvania or anything like that, Mary. I'm sadly, I'm going to have to go and do some real research on it and stuff too. But the Turnpike, I looked it up on Google Maps. It's really long. What part of tur the Turnpike? <laughs> the, was from Scranton, the first one, the first leg of the Turnpike was from Scranton to Allentown. And that's what it worked on? Yeah. Scranton. Okay. Northeastern. Pennsylvania. And I was trying to look and yeah. see what it was because there's so many different options when you start to type it into the the um, yeah. maps. And it me like all these things. I'm like, oh, I don't know which one's one from the other. And sometimes I find it a little hard because even like, especially on Cindy's list, like it's either you get to broken links or you get to links that have nothing to do with genealogy. It just goes to like a government site or or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's not. Somebody should take over cement. Cement. and fix it. That was working in the cement plant. I mean, you, that did the turnpike work, right? Um, no, that was my dad's, on my dad's side, my, my grandpa. Actually, if you look up um, Portland Cement, um, Copley, Pennsylvania was one of the first producers of Portland Cement. And Portland Cement was really, really important, like in the beginning, like the early 1900s, because it mimicked the European blend of the cement that they were used to working with. Mm. So they had these kilns that they're still there to this day. Like I remember growing up as a kid, we always passed by them on the way to Grammy's house. And it was, I never knew how historic it was. Did they have lung issues from the, all that powdery stuff? The asbestos? I'm, I'm, you know what? Like, not really. Like, well, my grandmother, from working in the cigar factory. Um, but really, my, a lot of my ancestors, they lived well into their late 80s, 90s and just healed over from heart attacks and, you know, whatnot. There we go. My, my, my dad was talking <laughs> to my grandfather on the phone and he had a massive heart attack and died like instantly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was on the phone with him. Yeah. Oh my gosh. She wasn't saying he was going down. Yeah, this was like in the 1979 when he died. And I remember because I was in, in kindergarten and my dad was on the phone with him. And yeah. Yeah, because there was a place in the house where you sat to talk on the phone. Yes. I remember that place. And he was as long as you can get. Yeah, he used to get the long cords, but this one wasn't that type of phone. It was you sat down to talk on the phone and it had the address book and the the little Rolodex and whatnot, yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing or a, a bad thing that you're, they were kind of together, but not. not. Yeah. Well, you know, he didn't suffer. No, he like, he just, bam. Oh, I've got a question about these old phones. Our family <laughs> had this, and um, I think a couple houses I've seen that I, I moved into or whatever, they had it on the phone. Now remember these things on the wall, Mm -hmm. You take them off. There was a glow in the dark sticker from our from a funeral home. No, <laughs> you guys have those too. <laughs> I always, I remember like, no, when we have the funeral homes phone number Russian. No, <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> call the funeral home. Oh my god, call the funeral home. <laughs> oh god. But I remember the house I moved into on Bellhaven um, in East Salinas. I remember it had it had a thing, and so I guess funeral homes at that time, or at least in Salinas, they had these glow in the dark things that yeah. they made stickers made for you to put on the on the end of the phone. And it had the <laughs> okay. It was just me. I thought I, I thought it was everybody. Okay. <laughs> it made me think of it because Mary's. Mary said he died while he was on the phone. <laughs> it's all over time. It's morbid time, all right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, you're dying. So, anything else, Mary? To I know that's about it. Yeah, yeah, that's, in America. yeah, that's really about it. Um, I thought they were all like. Well, another reason why I brought up the life story was 
when I looked up my grandfather's mother, it said that she was born to her father. So there was no, there's no record of her mother. Oh, weird. Oh, we would have forgotten. Yeah. yeah. Try to deal with these. Yeah. She was she born to, to, yeah, she was born to, and her dad's name was Daniel. And he came over here. He ended up dying in 1923. But he was alive for her to have her first son. And I even think her second son, yeah. So both her sons were living. And there's no mention of the first husband. And then her dad died. And then she married um, the second husband. It's just really strange. Huh. Yeah. You know, I've been doing a lot of the obituary stuff and it's frustrating because they'll say Mrs. And then it preceded, you know, who's who's left. And it's like Mrs. Alan Smith. And you're like, well, yeah. what's her name? Well, right. who is she? Yeah. Which, which who? <laughs> it's like so, well, it's so hard. It's, it's, so hard. it's like it's not fair because then it's like, well, I need to find her family line. I'm not going to find it through her husband. But right. It's, so, they, it's like they took ownership of the women. Yeah. Completely. Oh, yeah. It's sad. And, and also, if it's Mrs. So-and-so, so-and-so, it could mean that. Let's see how, but if it's her first name, female name, and husband's last name, that could indicate that she's a widow. Oh, is that what they did? Yeah. So they kept the missus. So, but they kept the missus, but it became so Mrs. Catherine Kilgallen inferred that husband Edward was dead. Otherwise, she would have been Mrs. Edward Kilgallen. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't either. That's, that's how it used to be. I don't know how it is now, but back in the morning, I've been regionally proper, day, proper days, that's that's when you became widowed, you became Mrs. Catherine Kilgallen. Uh -huh. I do know, I do know that I had the, um, I was just looking briefly over her profile and um, I had to add the, the record from the 1930 census. Remember I told you I found that, but I think I found it on family search and I just didn't bring it up. The spelling was off. It was spelled differently, and that's why I couldn't find it on Ancestry. And for some reason, I found it on Family Search. Well, but if they, you look you know, up her profile. She her she's not she doesn't show up the nineteen thirty census. There's no record of it yet. I had to look it up under that particular spelling, and then add it because it is legit. It's it's her, and it has. John and her other daughter, Sophie. And I think by that time, Michael is out of the house by then. So, but yeah, but that's it. Uh, oh, I hey. That was interesting. No, it was. I think there's a lot to explore. Can I, can I interject really quick before we go to Deirdre's story? Sure. Sure. Um, one of the things I was working on was, remember I said that, that we found this letter of people who had been adopted, it's Mark's side of the family. And it was confusing because yeah. here's, here's Mar Aunt Marge, Mark's aunt and his dad talking about it. And, and they were saying, I thought she only had one sister, you know, and a brother. And then, and then here I find out later, she had two sisters. And it's just an interesting thing is that they don't even know, they didn't even know their aunt. They didn't know their mom, how many family members their mom had, it's kind of odd, but that, I guess that's what it was. But what I uncovered was that these people had mother and father, mother died of heart disease, and the father was an alcoholic. That's what it's written in one of these letters. I don't know who died first. I haven't gotten that far back, but they had like one, two, three, four, five kids. And so in this letter, this handwritten letter, some older relative is explaining to Aunt Marge that one child was adopted by this family and two daughters were adopted by the other family. 
Oh. And well, actually, it's only four kids. Okay, so two daughters went with one family. One daughter went with another family. Took on different last names, so it was really confusing when I'm trying to find them because they had different last oh. names. Part of the time they had one name. Part of the time they yeah. had another name. And then they said, and Richard Wilson. Was it the Wilsons? He kept his name, or say it's Richard Wilson. He kept his name. So in this rambling kind of letter that she's writing, she says, Richard Wilson kept his name. His wife, it doesn't mention who it is. She died in the, in the flu. The 1918. So I know she died from 1918 to 1920. And then their 12-year-old son also died in that flu. So I can kind of figure out what year he was born, 1904 or something like that. No name. And there was a daughter who was named Ruby and Ruth, Ruth. And when she was six, the father left and took and no more was heard of them. But the way the woman wrote it, this is when the little girl was six, the father left. So you're thinking in your mind, oh, and she, she just left a child. But then the second sentence, it says, and then nothing more was ever heard of them. So I guess he left with her. So that was another thing I've been trying to say is trying to figure out. I thought I'd like to know what happened to them. Yeah. And his daughter. And I have hit a big wall. Boom. But it would have been right around if it was 1920, then the depression hits not long after that. And so for a, a boy who probably didn't have much family, um, he may not have had the help, you know, to, uh, he may have put on some, had some very hard times. And the little girl would have been, she was six in like 1920 or 1919. So she would have been a teenager, probably getting married as early as she probably could. Mm -hmm. financial reasons but anyway so, that, so that's a little brick wall i hit is that but i thought it was an interesting thing that it goes back to the flu and that um nobody knows what happens to them it's just so sad that these people just completely bye and no family was there mm. just sad yeah that's he could be a governor of the state of tennessee for now i, I don't know <laughs> i don't know what happened to him but it was interesting well it's funny that you mentioned that because i was looking up <clears throat> on looking up pennsylvania history and occupations and whatnot i stumbled across it was a pennsylvania heritage um yeah pennsylvania heritage just look up pa heritage dot com and there's this article about the not so good old days and it talked about disease and the str struggle for public health in Pennsylvania. And it particularly went into like the late 1800s and how much they struggled with typhoid. And Ooh. just people not realizing, you know, that unclean water and unsanitary conditions until there were, you know, different, uh, Call, uh, uh, until they formed, you know, departments in order to clean up the streets and whatnot. But yeah, <clears throat> that'd be an interesting area happen. we should explore too. Is uh, you know how how diseases affected our family history? Yeah, yeah. Because we had a in Arkansas. They lived in a valley at one point and they said that a lot of people died of some sort of illness some sort of valley they didn't call it a valley fever i can't remember what they called it but they said that it was very unhealthy where they lived in this swamp in area yeah. where Pennsylvania. arkansas um <clears throat> yeah so okay Derry, you're up Okay, did you, I mean, I don't think it's really long, but it's three o'clock. Did you want me to start or? Go for it. Okay, all righty. So um, I just picked one thing. It was my grandfather from Switzerland that came here. Um, he first, he came, 
went to um, uh, to Gilroy to a cousin that already had the cattle. And um, as you know, there in Switzerland, they do have the cattle. I mean, I think he was, you know, I can't say he was a professional dairy man at 17 years old when he came, but, <laughs> um, you know, I think everybody had their own cow and he probably helped people who had bigger herds before he left Switzerland. And so he went to Gilroy. I mean, that's where he kind of landed, but then he was not there long. It was in the Salinas Valley and were different um, dairies. And this is information I got from the historic context statement from the agriculture resources in the North County planning area of Monterey County. So, Whoa. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Prunedale, Pajaro. <laughs> um, but it, it, I think it was from the Monterey County Historical Society too, um, some information. And that Briskini, he's always, yeah, I know that name. You know, yeah. writing stuff. Um, and it was from the book that he wrote. Well, oh, with Haversat. I, we see that name a lot too, huh? Which one? Haversat, H A V E R S A T, okay. local people. Mm -hmm. And Mary Ellen Ryan, a cultural resources overview of the coast and Coast Valley study areas. So, and then I've seen this a few times on Facebook. Well, more than a few times, soulofcalifornia.org. And they have like little factoids, like they'll show a picture and then they'll do like a little story, like just a, a short paragraph of something. So this one was on exploring cities of the Central Coast, Gonzales. So uh, Mary, I don't know, you probably not don't know, Gonzales is like 20 minutes, 15 minutes south of Salinas. It's pretty close. Okay. So yeah. um, sorry if I'm just like reading to you, but <laughs> it's easier for me than to paraphrase it. And so California's temperate climate allowed farmers here to raise cows for about 60% of what it cost East Coast farmers because it was cheaper to house and feed them out West. I mean, that's pretty obvious, but I don't know how many of us really contemplated that before. And feed costs were relatively low because crops grow year round. Um, and in Obviously in colder climates, it's very expensive to feed animals in the winter. And local cows here ate 100,000 tons of sugar beet pulp annually, as well as alfalfa. Really? So, well, you know, Spreckles- With sugar beets, With right? sugar beets. Mary, do you remember seeing like Spreckles Sugar Company little packets of sugar like in restaurants? I don't no. even know. Oh, okay. It was a big, big company, and it's like just right outside Salinas. Yeah. Um, and you can still see some of the big buildings that they had. So I remember, I remember sugar beets. You don't remember sugar beets, Susan, here? The smell of the sugar beets? No, I remember speckles. I remember when I remember speckles, it was out of business, but it was still there. I remember <laughs> Nestle. Okay. I remember driving around and you could smell the chocolate. <laughs> Ooh, baby. But I never, I never went to the factories. I was, I was young. So uh -huh. okay. You're out yeah. there farther than I am. So you remember the sugar beets? I don't I yeah. know anything about it. I mean, I knew uh -huh. that it was there and I knew it had to do with sugar. Right. So they grew a lot of sugar beets, but then um, I think cane sugar kind of took over more um, when Hawaii became a state or I don't know we anyway it took over then sugar beets in the ground 
Um, so dairying increased as farmers devoted more acres to alfalfa, um, which of course now we don't do that, but anyway. So the mild climate also allowed cows to live outside throughout the year rather than barns. So the climate really impact the cultural landscape. North County barns, just right outside Selena, didn't require large barns to house the herds. Um, so obviously that cut costs. In 1915, um, that's a little bit before my grandfather arrived, the county had about 20,000 dairy cows, 45 creameries, and one evaporated milk plant. The county produced 15% of California's cheese. Dairying was a major industry, but the Cal Salinas and Pajaro Valleys were dairy centers um, adapted for dairying being the climate absolutely ideal in every respect. That was somebody's quote. Um, and they thrive particularly in Castroville near the Elkhorn Slough and the Springfield district north of Moss Landing. In 1897, the Castroville Cooperative Creamery was the county's first creamery. The Royal Creamery bought it before World War II and moved it to Salinas. By 1881, San Francisco banker, um, Henry Myers had a mansion a short distance from Castroville. I always wonder when I go to Castroville, you know, some of those old houses where he grew grain and prospered with his Elkhorn dairy, which supplied all of Stanford University's milk for a time. Where was this at in Watsonville? Uh, Castroville. Elkhorn. It's, it's not still out there, is it? That mansion? I don't know. I don't know. You would think it'll last. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and I don't, oh, let's see, when did they, oh, se September 2010. Today, the Moon Glow Dairy in Moss Landing is the North County's only active dairy. And that is, I know that is no longer around. Um, and that was County Supervisor um, Calcagno my mom graduated from high school with him, so in 54. Um, so the increase in success of the dairy industry in Monterey, as well as other California counties like Ferndale, California up north, was due to the industry dominance by Portuguese and Swiss dairy operators in the 1880s who rented plots from large land owners to get a start in the valley and continuously increase their holdings and production, which is what my grandfather did. You know, he saved his money and then was able to buy, you know, property. Um, the introduction of alfalfa feed is directly related to the expansion of the dairy industry. And my grandfather, I, um, Susan um, touched up, improved a photo where he was out cutting the alfalfa and they had, you know, they used huge piles on, they had a rake that piled it up high on a trailer to haul it back up to, I assume they put it in the barn so it wouldn't get rained on or whatever. When it used to rain, um, in the 1870s. I almost said that, I laughed because I, I was so close to saying, well, I remember those days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So in the 1870s, which is way before he came, but the Swiss immigrants, so his role doesn't came sooner, I guess, that settled the Salinas Valley, um, began it as milk, cow milkers had already established dairies. I know I'm repeating myself, but these are different sources. Um, but with time, these hardworking pioneers eventually bought their own land in herds, like my grandfather. And... Um, yeah, in its heyday, there were more than 400 dairies. That seems like a lot, but of course, you know, they were mom and pop ones. But my grandfather had employees and um, my grandmother would cook for them. And she, I remember, I, it was an important thing. Like if you were, 
because just like anywhere, the employees could go to one of the other 400 dairies and work. So if the, you know, if it was a tipping point, if one place had better food than the other, you know, and um, so by 1915, Gonzales was the largest dairying town in Monterey County. And um, this was due in large part to the construction of the Alpine Evaporated Cream Company in 1906 by John Mayenberg. And we still do see, like now it's Mayenberg. I don't know if, if it's a different Mayenberg that the goat milk you see in the grocery stores, at least in Salinas, you can see it, um, is heralded as the inventor of the evaporated milk process. And this caused a boom in the industry, opening the door to additional uses for the milk. And my grandfather did work for the pet milk company, PET. Do you guys mm -hmm. remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They did a, a, a con, um, <laughs> canned milk of some kind. A little canned yeah. milk for like making chocolates and stuff. It's called separated milk. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I think they still are in business doing that. Yeah. That's a yeah. Big report. yeah. Concentrated milk, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. Ah, I evaporated milk. Why he right. came here, you know, from Switzerland, because there were already a lot of people doing the occupation that he knew from his homeland. And um, like, if you go down to our ranch, you can go in the barn and you can see the wooden, I guess you could call them head stalls. The cows go in and then there's a board that goes across so they can't pull their head out, but they go in and then there's a trough. So they're eating while they were milking. And then toward the rear end of the cow on um, this, there you had a cement floor, but with a, a, a channel so that they could just wash out the poop and pee as it came out in the back end and you know to keep the barn well as sanitary as they could but um yeah obviously you know it was a hard job 24 7 you have to milk them twice a day because otherwise they'll get mastitis they'll get sick and um, yeah yeah do you have any of the milking machines or anything like that still we do uh-huh they are like um if you go to a county fair now and they have dairy cows, they bring like a big metal round can and it's got um, tubing with four suction cups that you stick on the teeth. Um, and so it, it went into the can. And then we do have like those, the large milk cans that you see like you know, with the two handles, they're tall and circular, cyn cylindrical. Um, yeah. And then we have near the barn, but outside the corral is a cement, a small building, outbuilding to keep the milk cool. And then the truck would come and pick up the milk um, and take it to the creamery or the co-op. And that was how he got rid of his milk, you know. Um, they come once a day? I don't know if they, it must have, it probably was only once a day. Because you've got to get it, you can't wait too long. But oh, no, I, get, I, well, I wondered if you meant, did they come twice a day? Oh, no, I'm sure they came. <laughs> yeah, because, um, you know, I don't know how cold that building could really keep it. I'm sure it was refrigerated, but you know, make some kind of cooling, but. That would be just even thinking about that. You'd have to run that pickup service seven times a week. Oh yeah. And if you didn't pick up or somebody was sick or something like that, then you have spoiled milk and all the dairy farmers would be pretty upset. Right. And I don't know if I already mentioned it before, but my grandfather had a heart attack at like 42 and so uh, you know a distant relative you know 
fortunately, was able to help him. Um, and then he had another heart attack a few years later. And then, you know, that it was just too much. And my grandfather was not a big man. I mean, you saw me, I'm short. And um, so fortunately, by then, the alfalfa, it was going into row crops. So he was had enough land to live off of by renting it out to the lettuce and strawberry growers, wow. you know, vegetable growers. And, um, and it was nice because it was another Swiss family, um, you know, obviously younger a little bit, but they were able, I, like, they were like closest family. Um, you know, I remember we'd go every Christmas Eve to their house and, you know, for they'd have a big Christmas party and, um, yeah. So for a long, 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 long time, I mean, my whole life until maybe 15, 18, 20 years ago, they rented our property and, and they were farmers. They had their own land too. And um, then the kids are like, it's just too hard being a small farmer. And so now we rent the property to Huntington Farms. <laughs> who is nature's reward if you buy any produce and it says nature's reward it could have come from our place oh cool yeah. so they didn't want to sell the land oh oh no 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 swiss people don't sell land no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's income generating yeah and then of course you know we always hope that somebody in the family will want to farm but my grandfather from switzerland had one child a girl who you know they did not farm back then females and then that girl married and had two girls me and my sister and we lived in oregon so um yeah but i mean now we live here but um and you yeah. have granddaughters and i have three daughters who now there are two granddaughters and one more granddaughter on the way it's like okay i just yeah <laughs> anyway i wait for those great greats to get here Dare dream. They'll have a, one of those sons is going to say you know like just like in the back in the day whenever what was it i said earlier in this call the 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 starting to make a resurgence that people are interested in what was it The very beginning of this, I was saying that we had. I, I was here, so I know I was paying attention, but I can't think what it was. I said, yeah. I said, Dare Dream, we're, we're old school, where we're. Tamberly's watching this now, and she's going to go, well, yelling at the screen. <laughs> but that um, it's making a resurgence where, oh, darning socks and being frugal. That's what it was. Yeah, and, and that people are people are going. Ah, oh, make a quilt out of the old sacks. So somewhere in a in a few generations, there's going to be people like I'm working the land. I my family has land. I want to work it. Homestead. So it's, yeah, there may be somebody in the I have a it, but... shirt and vest as we speak here. Oh, and, <laughs> and her jacket I'm using as a blanket because it's so cold in my. Oh, house. I'm cold too. I've got a. Got I it. saw. I thought. Yeah, we're all the same here. Oh, I'm I'm cold. That was interesting. Oh. You know, how about King City? Did that have any? That was, I didn't know much about it, but that was where they had a lot of um, cattle, but they were killing them, right? It wasn't a dairy. Yeah, I think it was more beef. And I don't know if they were just too far from the, you know, cannery, you know, from big enough cities to supply. But also, they didn't get as much rain. So it may have been a, food source issue whereas you know the beef you can just let them go and roam you know you don't have to have them come back to the barn twice a day mm -hmm. to milk yeah to milk do you remember um my my in-laws my ex-in-laws have a house over on marion which is around the corner from me kind of it's by washington middle school and i remember they have a 
they had a kitchen and then at the back of the kitchen there was this little door you could open up and then on the outside of the house there was another door so they told me that's where the milkman would come and they would leave the milk in this little door on the outside of the house down the driveway so it was like onto the property a long ways and then the the woman or who whoever would open the door from the inside and they could take the milk and, and do whatever they're going to do with it. And then they could take the empty bottles and put it back in there. And then the milkman would come and they trade it, but that's how they did it. Not like on the doorstep. Yeah, I uh, only had it at the doorstep when I was a kid. Yeah. I, I don't remember it. At that all. was a fancy street. I bet it was a fancy house. Yes. Wealthy. Well, my in-laws definitely weren't, but the, um, uh, Oh, originally. You know, it's it, the house. I can't even think that it was that much older than the house I have right now, which I my house is in 1950. So theirs must have been in the maybe the 40s. But still, I don't know. Has anybody else had any seen that kind of thing where they have the no the milkman? No. Cindy, no? No. I mean, um I vaguely no. No. Interesting. I wonder why Salinas would have something like that. Well, the milkman must have known that it would be there. So it must have been a common feature of the area. I, mean, uh, I think it was a rich person thing. What was a rich person to have milk? They the special special doors. Two way door. doors of special yeah. system. It would keep it cooler because it was it was in the wall, basically. And mm -hmm. nobody'd steal it, wouldn't get hot, wouldn't. And then, I mean, wasn't it, you know, there was that joke, right? Oh, milkman. but that kid doesn't look like his dad. It must have been, like <laughs> yeah. been the milkman. If you're, okay. if you're fans of Father oh, Ted, there's oh. a really good one with the uh, oh. milkman. What, Mary? No, nothing. I was, I was laughing at that. And I was like, there's no porch pirates either. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> uh, all the milk, all the stories, whenever I think of somebody having their milk delivered, all of them make me think of, I love old mysteries and stuff like that. And it was always, they find the person had been murdered because nobody picked up their milk and the milk is still the same. They interview the lady across the street. She goes, nobody's picked up the milk and the milkman keeps bringing yeah. her milk and it's just still sitting there on the porch. And so then they get, they go inside and somebody's, you know, they killed some, some, um, old person who's had a lot of money but didn't know they'd inherited and the, and the kid came over and you know because they were the next to kin and those are all, milk milk is always these milk <laughs> deliveries are always the on the um always part of the plot <laughs> so i have i have actually two things for occupation one is the bigger one to wait but i have a small appropriate so maybe i can milk related that. Or no. murder related. <laughs> Coal mining related. Oh, oh okay. That's oh, right. Right. So, yeah. your family somewhere. I do think this one should come up. Okay, is that up? Yes. Yes. Oh, Coal mining. Oh, she has a PowerPoint. Yeah, I'm finding that's easier, but I'll go last so that way I'll find out the so my okay, own. No, wait, how do I get this to be full screen again? Oh, up here. No. Uh slideshow from beginning. Okay. So this is a trip um, that we took in, we took lots of trips around Ohio, Pennsylvania, because Pat has his high school reunion every five years into Ohio. And one of the trips we went to a coal mine that was uh, for tourists. So these are the pictures from that. I can't. Oh, yeah, I think you mentioned that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a okay. coal miner. There's, there's <laughs> this hat. We all had to wear hats. And we're getting in this coal mine truck. This is actually as we're leaving. You can see it's dark, but I wanted to start off with the coal, the coal mine. And this is what we would get in. This is what the coal miners would get in to go down into the mine. I think it was. Is that a, is that like, did you have to duck it to get into that? It looks like there's some. No, it's the darkness is in the background. I think. Is oh, that a pole question. going across the entryway? Yeah. Go, no, see, there's a yeah. on it. Standing, yeah, he's standing on, on it. Yeah, I think the darkness is like sardines. But maybe you had to go under to get in. That's what I mean. It looks like you had a duck to get into that. Maybe, maybe that's a giant, a mutant. 
<laughs> yeah, this was in 2005, so I don't remember the deep. I see what you're saying, Susan. Yeah, it looks maybe. You were probably, yeah, that's, looks like that's you probably had a crouch in there. Yeah, I don't remember because I hardly have been failed. Or coal miners are not even at work, and look what the gyrations they got to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this, this mine is set up as for tours. So it starts off showing handpick mining. So 1800 to 1860, um, what's that say? All you, all work, all work manual by, by pick and, pick shovel. and shovel. So, you know, that's what it looked like, you know? My tendonitis hurt just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking mad. <laughs> okay, yeah, and so this is, see, this oh, is- Oh, that, no, part. I don't think so. Was that's it like that, where the people didn't mind like that, did they? Was that what yeah. it looked like? Yes, I think so. It was just like loosely laying around. You just had. Oh well, no, that's that's maybe after it's been picked out and it's there, ready to go into the. Pool. Okay, this is worse than I even imagined. Oh, can I can't even imagine your lungs. Oh, no mask. Okay, and this is going a little further. So now there's machinery that's beginning to do things. Let's see the that pull into the wall. Yeah, I guess so. I think so. Well, they drill in and then they detonate it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. How did it yeah. Yeah. that drill? Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly can't tell you too much about it other than the pictures, a thousand words or whatever. <laughs> see, so this is. Well, yes, yeah, so you see the drill. You know, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. Like a, it's like sliding in. Look at that. Yeah, sliding in. You're right. Oh, and there's and the drill. You blow it up. Yeah, you blow it up and then you put supports and then you dig it out. Put it in those carts. Wow, wow, look at that. So it is, look at how charcoal it is. I, I never really thought about it before, but look, that's charcoal. Like and, and it's low because you know, you don't want to waste time or you don't want to have big cavernous things that you can stand in because then you're can't get into the mines or where the coal is. So this is a chute, I guess. So it's coming down the chute. See, there's a guy sits in a kneeling position, the, the guide. So see how short it is? Mm -hmm. He's kneeling. Oh, oh I had to clean I know, that. I oh, know why you say, yeah, yeah, that makes my knees hurt now too. Yeah. Why, why was it not tall? I don't understand. I guess what I'm trying to say is, is First of all, it'd be harder to hold it up if you had yes, that. I can understand. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're following the veins. Oh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of guessing that living here because I don't know, but I do think it's following the veins and, and that'll hold it up. And that just looks horrible. Yeah. Ugh. So here's some more. Machinery. I, I, Pat may remember more what he said, but. And you know, they're going to come home and just drops dust all, whole dust all over the house. So that yeah. looks like a little tiny sort of hoe. What is that? Oh. Looks like uh, a tamp. Oops, sorry. Let me go back. Yeah, it looks like a tamp. What would that be? To stamp down something? I don't know. I could get Pat in here and see if he remembers. Well, we can make it up. Yeah. We can make it up. It looks like something to tamp, to tamp it down the, I don't know. Oh, yeah. He's working by the chute. So maybe he uses it to pull it down. Yeah, like to, to break it. it pull it break further. It. That might be sticky. Yeah. yeah. Machine is doing something. Maybe shaking it or latest modern method. 1950 the present. Yeah, there it is. Oh, okay. continuous oh. mining. What does it say? Joy continuous miner? Two loads in one complete. Maybe. I mean, that's maybe the name of the Joy continuous miner. Digs and loads in one operation. Operation, yeah. Into shuttle cars to conveyor belt or cars to surface. What is that first word? It looks like it says joy. Joy. It is joy. Well, it why would joy, joy. can 
tenuous minor it was made by mr joy i mean you know oh it's not happy it's his last name okay got it i'm thinking don't know and that's thinking. the name of the kind of machine it's a joy machine joy yeah as opposed to the uh somebody light bulb you know Edison light bulb or something okay let's see and then this is the cart must be coming to us or is that it looks like a cart there's the cart and i it's either coming to us so we can get in it or we're seeing it leave or we're seeing it go back into the mine oh my gosh you went into that yes. i don't know if i could do it yeah. How, yeah. how far down are you cindy um half a mile in i remember oh. that oh no 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 <laughs> there's it was like into a you know it was a big hill or big whatever we went into it and they did turn off the electricity for us to see what total blackness was. Oh, how was. fun. <laughs> anyway, that was it. Oh, I that was interesting. Insane. Did you uh, have to lay down or would if or would your head hit the top or no, you could fit? <laughs> no, no, could I could fit. Pat had to be over. See if you if you remember back at the beginning. Yeah, go to the first picture. It was real see low how to the ground. See, you're sitting low in the thing. Yeah. I'd want to lay down. I know. See how low they are. Oh, I'd yeah. be worried somebody take off your head. Yeah. Earthquake. Uh, yeah. Well, they well, say they were... when you go into caves, like uh, uh, an actual cave cave, mm -hmm. you don't feel no earthquakes. There's no earthquake. They're yeah. the, the safest places to be. No. So no, anyway, that was. Right, maybe, maybe these are like the same thing. Huh. I just thought that was so, it was a really fascinating yeah. to go okay. to. And Is this in Pennsylvania? Yeah, southwest, southeastern, southwestern Pennsylvania, somewhere like um, Fayette County or. Well, that was really Fayette interesting. County or I can see like doing that. a tour like that. That would be really it was. interesting it was. to see how, yeah. how it was done. Boy, it, I, that does not look healthy. <laughs> I know. And, yeah. Pat's big on factory tours and, of course, mining. So we go to lots of interesting things. So factories, we went to the deer factory. Uh, it's amazing in Iowa. That they still want to do this. You know, I find it fascinating that they still do coal. I did not know. I did not know that people still do coal. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. But I'm in California, so. Maybe this isn't. Well, I think they do. I don't know. This is not a working mine, I don't think. I think it's a or something well mary who what who uses coal like oh, oh like a big uh like uh utility companies and then they sell it as electricity or something oh i i don't Power? i don't know i don't know i just know that some people still use it to heat their homes somebody know. comes along yeah. and they drop off a bunch of coal like in a coal yeah. bin and and then you go out and you shovel it into a bucket and you come in and put it in your for real for real yeah. well, yeah, there they, are people that yeah well they keep saying that people are you know upset about losing their coal jobs and i've been hearing that for a while and i and i kept thinking to myself but nobody uses coal i mean what would you well well they're about they're about ready to shut down the inglewood uh production fuel production is that in your area? In Inglewood, California. I did, we have a coal mine no. here? Not a coal, fuel. That's for like Petro. Yeah, they, they produce oh, fuel yeah. in Inglewood. Oh. And they're just shut it down. And the offshore yeah. drilling, you know, is like in big trouble they're, now. They're Good so, so you, so there are people who say, I need to get my coal this for yeah. the winter and they, Come along and they seriously put it. So Pat's aunts in Pennsylvania, I don't know if that was still there, but they had a coal chute that would drop the coal into a bin in their house. Oh, yeah, right the house. house. Like in the basement or something. And then they'd have to go down with a bucket, <coughs> put it in the bucket and bring it up to Something the like that. I'd have to verify with Pat. And, and people are still doing this. Yeah. I don't know if they still are. This was 20 years. I don't know about that. But Mary, you should know this about the, you know, people losing jobs in the coal. I mean, is it still, 
like the coal industry? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm so, very ignorant asking this question, just, but I yeah, know I'm within friends. Still, like, it's still really big. And it's not like what Derek said, they're taking the coal and giving it to a someplace that's burning it and putting it into, turning it into energy? Probably. Electricity? I, mean, I don't know what they would do with it, but. Brickettes know. aren't made this way. No, well. I know that, I know that, you know, there's a, a, so many ways of importing energy. You know, you would think that that would be one of them. So if you're burning it. Well, just think of the antique steam engines around the country that are. Well, they're using steam. Oh, they're using wood? What are they using? Oh, steam. they're using steam. steam. They probably have something generate it, some kind of Must mechanism that produces it. Steam is just water, so it's... Oh, they don't use that. I don't know how they're probably heating it up just electrically. Oh, yeah, something's got to be heating it, so... Yeah. I don't know. I feel very silly not knowing the answer yeah. to this. Today. I'm with you, Susan. Yeah. With you. you just don't think about it. Same with the cows, you know. I like oh, I, I, I love milk at the store. I don't think about him actually milking a cow and then taking it somewhere and separating it and, and pasteurizing it. It just it's at the start. I, I, I love I can spend hours on YouTube watching videos like that, like old school stuff, like people like I'm trying to find this channel that I just started watching. It's um they literally cook everything outside. This lady cooked spaghetti and meatballs outside, like from literally getting the chunks of meat to making it the hamburger to cooking it up, to going out to the garden, getting the tomatoes, getting the spices and chopping it up and trying to find the actual, because they do all kinds of stuff. They, they make all kinds of food and it looks delicious. I'm trying to. Do they eat outside it. too? Yeah, they do it outside. No, do uh, they eat or do yeah. they go in the house? And... It's, uh, what is it called? I'm looking it up. Country Life Vlog. Country Watch this Life video. Vlog? Vlog, yeah. Country Life Vlog. And these or people blog. are messed up. Vlog, V-L-O-G. Yeah, they have like over 2 million subscriptions. Like they have a lot of people watching them. And yeah, it's just watching Oh, people okay, I see it. Making, and these hatchets they use. Like if you took one wrong chop, you'd be chopping off a finger. Pomegranate bracelet salad. I see. Best lamb burger I've ever made. Oh my gosh. That sounds good. Cooking outside. Yeah. I'm I love it. Lady. It's not in my wheelhouse, this foodie stuff. <laughs> wow. With the garden that they have, and they just go out and pick like these huge onions and bulbs of garlic. And, you know, I can plant more onions and, and beets and and um carrots yesterday <laughs> and radishes <laughs> i'm not gonna eat them but i planted them yeah oh why can't you eat them yeah. i like beets i love like radishes gross i just made beets that's what i, I kept going on mark around. loves them he <laughs> loves them so i mean i like, they like, beets. I like pickled eggs that are in beet juice but I can't eat beets. I hate them. I hate them. <laughs> I hate them. Oh, I'm not going to eat it. Mm -mm, sorry. No. I'll grow it. I'll grow it, but I won't. Oh, okay. Give so it away. Should... Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. So Tamberly and myself and Cindy are going to try. Yeah, to I have my other, other one about pottery. That's bigger. Oh, that's interesting. Very interesting. I, I watched a couple awesome. of videos on how to melt because mine's on foundries and stuff like that. And I, I watched some videos on how some guy will melt it and he'll put it in the sand and how they compact, and making, mm. making things that really interesting. But I thought I'd learn that process before I get to the foundry stuff, to the actual, like the- Okay, so we got me talking about pottery, Susan talking about foundry and what's Tamerlane talking about? Do we know? Oh, I have it written down. <laughs> Thank goodness Susan is good at I know. Oh, oh, yeah. Susan <laughs> writes. <the> <laughs> Not in this book. Yeah. 
I take notes. I uh, collect things. Textiles, maybe. Text well, I thought it was going to be on. Um, okay, here's the travel stuff. Steam trains. Mary's homework. The Electric City front street lights. Okay, Cindy Rhodes. Oh, this is older. West Virginia. That's all right. It'll be what it is. Occupations. Oh, Mary was ice cream, ice cream cone factory, Mary. My grandmother, yeah, no, she worked there. And she told yeah. me she worked in the ice cream cone factory. That's all she told me because every time we would get ice cream, she never wanted a cone because she said she ate so many. I think that's how she survived. And I almost think that's probably, ice cream. that's probably something that she did in Vienna, I'm thinking, when she was younger. And that kind of made me think that one picture of her standing with the beer, I think she worked like in a restaurant or something maybe, or did some sort of like another job on top of- Oh, she was, that's why they were all in the same outfit. Maybe they yeah, were working. Were working because she was like hauling cement up ladders and stuff and then taking any job she could to get to America. She was, you know, a hustler. Tamberly's doing dentistry. Oh, yeah. Dentistry. I remember yeah. her family has, they had a dentist yeah. office. And she told me that they, when the, her, her uncle inherited, the, he moved home. He was an archaeologist, not an archaeologist, architect, archaeologist. World War I, came home, was an architect for a while and lived in the family home. And they had a dentistry office in the home, like one of the floors. And then when the parents died and the dentist died, they just left it there and it was untouched. And this, her uncle just lived in another part of the house. And so when wow. they finally had to clean out the house, they had this dentistry from, was it, was it the fifties or forties? Yeah. Let, let her tell the story. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what I mean. That's what it was. So now I'm remembering that's why it was going to be. It'll be interesting. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Learning a lot. Yeah. All right, ladies, I'm going to go get something really to eat now. Yeah, I'm going to be too. All right, have a good night. Okay, see right. you next week. Next week. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Good stuff.